Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Um, got another video today looking at progress on turning the Batman and Friends uh, Reneus model into uh, Dolgok. Um, so in the last episode we looked at uh, modifying some of the metal parts from the from the original model. Uh, today I want to look at some of the the plastic uh, parts. So there are two main pieces of plastic that need modifying. Uh, one is the the kind of the foot plate, um, and the other is the cylinders. The cab from the original model doesn't really need any work doing to it because it's going to get replaced by the one from the from the detailing kit. Um, so let's start with the, the foot plate first. Um, so as you can see this has had quite a bit of stuff done to it and it's looking kind of messy at the moment but that will all get hidden under a, a primer coat but I thought I'd show you what we've got before I um, spread it in primer. So um, this was essentially... Uh, dunked in metal like I did the metal parts um, you can't leave it for very long because it makes the plastic really really soft if you do um, but you can leave it long enough that you can then um, kind of um, push the paint off the surface um, it can leave the paint looking a bit the, the plastic looking a bit rough um, but that's on the inside and I, I don't really care I've not really dealt, done much to that but the top surface um, you can kind of burnish with a fiberglass pencil and sandpaper and stuff and it looks it looks okay um, it was really weird so from looking underneath I'd assumed that the plastic was black so um, I thought all I had to remove was the orange paint um, but as soon as I started removing stuff it was obvious that there was some kind of weird things going on so essentially the plastic is black um, but then it was sprayed uh, well the upper surface everything kind of um, from the, 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 the top of the foot plate upwards um, was sprayed orange and then anything that wanted to be black was sprayed black again so um, for instance this this plain um, back head here um, black plastic sp sprayed orange and then sprayed black uh, now I've not really gone to too much trouble getting all of the orange off here because it's going to get hidden behind detailing pieces I add and stuff. But it did mean that anywhere there was kind of um, lines, details um, that were that were black, um, there was two layers of paint to remove and, and things. Uh, and you can see I've done a reasonably good job of removing all the paint. Um, I've left some of the orange just because it's difficult to get into some of the cracks. Um, my hope is that once this is all painted you'll never see the orange um, but even if you do if some of it leaks through for any reason it'll just look a bit like rust um, so I'm not too worried about that um, I've got m some of the red off the buffer beams although again it was quite hard to do that without kind of um, removing the detail and I didn't want to um, take too much of the the detail off um, you can see I have added detailed parts from the kit to the front there was a few little tiny uh, rivet marks on the plastic but nothing much and this adds a proper strapping um, and an extra is actually two layers I don't know if you can see that there's the there's the kind of H shaped piece and then there's a tiny little kind of diamond shaped piece around the hole where the coupling um, goes the coupling hook goes um, so that's all that's kind of two pieces um, stuck on uh, it was all just super glued I didn't want to try and um, unsolder the two parts together first um, so that all went really really well the instructions do say it was a bit difficult to remove the coupling hooks without breaking them um, I did have a thought about this I mean I know I had problems getting them off um, the Scar Lowy model but in the end what I did was I used a pair of cheap um, wire strippers rather than pliers and I just kind of put them so that they were kind of round the coupling and then gently pulled away uh, and that obviously put nice even pressure on the back of the hook and it just popped um, straight out of the hole. I did the same with the the buffers um, again just kind of to get kind of behind the thing nicely and just gently pull straight out and they popped they popped straight out they didn't appear to be glued in so they are all um, nicely stored away there's no damage to those so they should be able to go back uh, on the model without any problem um, I don't think I'm going to turn replacement buffers this time because um, it's not just the buffer head that's the removable part it's the full the shank and the pocket they go into and everything and I just think it's um, yeah it's more more effort than I'm willing to go to this time um, yeah so then the other thing that you can see that's different is that the splashes have been cut away from the original footplate and replaced with some 3d printed parts 
Um, this is to get the, the shape right, the shape on the original isn't, isn't great. Uh, you can also see that um, they've had metal um, etched parts again put on the faces to provide the rivet detail. Um, I've tried to make sure that the edges here are all smoothed down so that you can't see there's an overlay on the side of the parts. But again, we'll have to see how that goes when I uh, add a, P, uh, a some primer to this and see what it looks like. Um, before I add some primer, I will go in and uh, and provide some detailing um, on the back head. Uh, I've got a nice picture now that I can use. There should be just the door, the regulator, uh, one um, sight glass, a little shelf for an oil can and a couple of taps um, for uh, for for checking. I think I think they're basically for checking the same kind of thing as the sight glass, but there's there's there's, there's taps instead of a glass. Anyway. Um, Again, I'm not going to go super detailed on the back head. Just something that gives a, a representation. So when you, if you do look through the cab door, it's not, um, it's not completely blank. Uh, but yeah, that's that's that. As I say, it's looking, it's looking good. Um, now I've got most of the paint off. I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. You can go on on further. Um, and then we come to the to the the cylinders uh, and the slide bars. Now these were a pain, um, as I mentioned previously. Um, although I've undone the the motion from the chassis, I can't get. The piston rods out of the out of here they, they don't come out and I can't get the slide bars to come out of the plastic chassis plastic cylinder sorry um, so what I did was I pulled them up as far as they go and obviously I don't want to put the piston rod in the dental to strip it because I don't want the piston rod getting soft and, and warping so what I did was I pulled them out as far as they would go taped them off and then dunked this so that the dental came essentially just up to the very top of the cylinder here um, to keep the piston rod out of it um, that worked reasonably well. Um, this one you can see is white plastic, um, so I've I've managed to get all the stuff off the sides uh, to repaint. I can't really do the faces as well as I'd like because I don't want to lose the the rivet detail. Um, so I'm hoping that just when I paint that back, um, it'll be okay. But most of it's hidden anyway because it it slots in. Um, which way probably that way up. It slots in kind of behind. The buffer beam a bit like that so a lot of that detail is missing um, so i'm hoping that when it's painted um, it won't be too obvious uh, and again this side here i've done my best to get the paint off ready for for repainting um, but again i didn't want to get too much dental anywhere near the the piston rods i was hoping maybe the dental would soften the plastic enough for me to get the slide bars out but it, it, it didn't and I, I didn't want to leave it long enough obviously i need the i need the the, the pistons to slide smoothly uh, when they pop out, they um, they, they get a bit difficult to get back in. But you can see if I just move it slightly, they, they slide really nicely still. And obviously, with the wheels rotating, it won't pull it so far that it slides out. Uh, so yeah, so that's 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 all done. Um, as I said, the cab doesn't need doing because there's a replacement, which I've made a start on putting together. Um, there's a bit bit of stuff needing doing to this really. Um, so the cab itself was the 3D print. You can see on the inside, it's, it's all white. Um, so I've I burnished that to give a nice surface for putting the parts on, and then essentially you've got kind of top and bottom on the front, on the back, uh, top on the front, bottom on the sides, and tops on the sides, and then a roof that also has a, uh, a roof vent that's a separate a separate part. Um, they were all super glued in place. Um, strangely, they didn't fit as well as I would have expected, um, and it's weird because these parts fitted perfectly to the test print that I had uh, but these are definitely the these are definitely the final um, the final production edge so I'm wondering whether my uh, cab has warped slightly or something it seems to fit the model okay so uh, I'm not quite sure what's going on there but I had to I had to file a few pieces and, and, and things specifically I couldn't get this top half of the back to fit properly if I fit it against this plastic line in the middle then the windows were too high up and it was too it was protruding above the roof line, um, so I had to gently kind of sand the bottom equally until I could get it to fit. Uh, once I'd done that, it wasn't too bad, but yeah. And there was there was an issue with this this edge here being a bit proud this way. Um, again, I've just kind of filed it filed it flat, um, but that's looking okay. There is a there is a little slot here, that's for a um, an optional rail around the coal bunker um, that only appeared after it was rebuilt in I think the sixties, possibly seventies. Um, so, um, as far as I know, I want to do an early, slightly earlier version, hence I've gone for rounded top cabs, doorways, um, so I'm going to fill that hole 
um, and not fit the fit the coil rail. So um, yeah, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to fill it yet, um, but um, I will fill that and then sand it, sand it back. And you can see I've got some super glue still to remove uh, super gluing things. I always get it everywhere, but it, it it it'll burnish off. Not too not too worried about that. Um, so yeah, so that's all that's all done. So the cab the cab's done now as well. Um, so yes, yeah, so I think the next thing I just need to do do the back head, and then these bits can get some uh, primer on them. Um, so that's that's pr that's the the kind of plan of work for that plan of work for the for the body shell. The the rest of the body um, is still that. Um, I, I did have a go with a file, as you can see. I've taken the top off the coal, but it's quite hard going, um, just like it was on Skylowy. Getting the file. It's not that the material's hard to work because I found it wasn't when I did the. That took the chimney off but just getting in accurately without risking damaging other parts is a bit of a pain so i'm probably going to get the mill set up and just mill that off uh just for, for ease so that's that's where we are uh and that's what we'll uh yeah so hopefully by the next video i'll have this milled off um and the back head detailed at least to show you um the weather at the moment is atrocious so quite when i'll get to um spray any primer on these uh, i'm not sure because i tend to do that in the garden um so we'll, we'll have to see maybe that <clears throat> Once I've got all the parts prepared, uh, we have to take a break for a while until the weather improves, but we shall see.